This is Brian David Marshall from Magic Gathering. I'm here with Randy Bueller. Randy, you just crossed the finish line. <laughs> um, this it seems like it was a, a great event for you guys, just a great process. Yeah, and I think the real winners of the great designer search was us. Wizards R&D, we won. Yeah, you, guys, you guys are really, did you know you were keeping all three of the contestants when you came in? I mean, like, like you see these shows and it's obvious that there's, you know, it's like, oh, we're keep, everyone in the audience is gonna win. But I mean, did you guys know that coming into today? No. I mean, I, it certainly occurred to me that we might keep more than one. I mean, that was an option in my head at the beginning because we really set this up more as a way to find talented designers. I mean, it was a reality show because that was a fun way to do it and we got to turn it into this promotion. But like whenever we hit a fork in the road where it was like, do we th do the thing that's good drama or do we do the thing that's good hiring process? Like we erred on the side of finding quality people. And so it was another thing like that. Like with that philosophy, I knew all along there was a chance we might keep more than one. No, I certainly never imagined keeping everybody. I mean, it was, it was just blown away by the quality of the people that we got. So what, what do all three of these contestants have to look forward to over the next year? What, what is their life gonna be like? How's it changed? And how amazing is it to be like reading magicthegathering.com six months ago and now to be working on for, the, for Wizards of the Coast? Yeah, I mean, I think Alexis is the clear winner. I mean, she gets the, the dream job. She's the magic design intern. She gets to work with Mark Rosewater. She gets the desk right, right next to his. And, you know, she's going to be doing all magic all the time. I know she's, she's really got the dream job. The, so, I mean, her life, it's a change of career. I know it's a, it's a tryout. She's obviously hoping this will turn into a permanent gig. I mean, if it works out, we're hoping it turns into a permanent gig as well. So, I mean, it's definitely sort of a, certainly career changing, arguably life changing sort of a time for her. Who are some of the past people who've held uh, the internship position that she's going to be holding? We haven't had a design intern before. We've had a lot of luck with development interns. So, you know, Mike Turian got his foot in the door in R&D as a development intern. Matt Place did the same thing. You know, Eric Lauer has that position now. Brian Schneider came in off an internship. So we have this really good tradition of trying out Pro Tour players as development interns and then seeing, you know, if that has worked out more often than not, we thought, oh, cool, let's try the same thing with design. The problem is, like with designers, there's no professional tournament series that bubbles up the best you know, casual player who's really smart and likes to think about magic and design their own cards. Where do you find those people? Right, this is the first time we've really come up with a process to identify those people, bring them in, give them the tryout. So this is the first magic design internship, but the internship is something that it's been working out great for us. And you know, more often than not, those do seem to turn into permanent gigs. What were, what were the qualities that these three contestants um, all you, that you found unifying them, and what were the qualities that really set them apart when you had to make the decision to award someone the big prize? Interesting question. The, there's a bit of a difference in that it's clear that Alexis and Graham had always designed magic sets for fun, right? They're the kind of people that have a bunch of designs on their computer, you load up, they've got the documents. Whereas Ken was more like clearly into magic, probably the most into magic of any of them. Thoroughly passionate about the brand, but it's like the other two I think were reading magicthegathering.com when the announcement went up and they're like, oh my God, this is the job I've been waiting for. And Ken was like, that sounds cool. Yeah, what, what the hell, let me try that. And so it sort of, it struck me as interesting that, you know, Rosewater was able to put the challenges together where you couldn't just dust off some design that you'd had, you'd thought about for, for months and for years. He really wanted to challenge people to think now, on the fly. And so I guess that's the thing they all three had together. It was clear that they've got more than one design in them, right? It's not like anybody can design their first set because you know, you've had your whole, whole life to design. It's like anybody can write their first book. You've got your whole life to write it. But now write the second one and you've got three months. And all three of these were able to really, on the spot, given some complicated constraints, given 72 hours, think in that compressed time frame, and you know, make it up as they went along. That was very, really impressive. Excellent. Now, you asked what set Alexis apart, and I think it was, it was polish and it was consistency. You know, everybody showed flashes of, of greatness, but I really think Alexis was clearly ready to hit the ground running. She knows her stuff. I mean, she's I honestly, she's a product of magicthegathering.com. She's clearly read every word Mark Rosewater's ever written. Yeah. She sort of gets the way we do things. And I, I don't know if that's what we set out to create when we launched that website, but it's how it turned out. I mean, it's, this is, she's clearly one of the people we created. So you feel like Mark Rosewater's just held a class every Monday morning for the last 
how, five years, four years? I don't even know how long it's been now. Yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, it's, and I mean, you want somebody who can think for themselves, and I'm not saying Alexis is you know, gonna be a Rosewater disciple or anything, but I mean, she's clearly digested those lessons and is able to apply them, and is able to think for herself, and that, that level of polish, I think, really set her apart. She was sort of more consistently better than the other contestants. Well, there you have it. You have three winners, one big winner, another big winner in Wizards of the Coast. And uh, if you're looking for where to go to class, now you know.